Hi friends, welcome back to Rafting Magazine, and we are here at the River Store with my friend Kristen. Woo. What are we doing today, Kristen? We are going to test the slipperiness of different shoes, from socks and chalks all the way up to your approach shoe. So what do we got for shoes to test today? We have the Z2 Choco Cloud. With these amazing neoprene socks in it for all you socks and chalks nerds. Heck yeah, gotta have your socks and chalks. Um, we have the La Sportiva, which model is that? This is the TX3. TX3. Adidas Trail Cross. We have the Rassler, the PFD Sandal, the Astro Brewest. We also have the TX Canyon. We also threw in socks and chocks. And just for fun, we used Kristen's Vans skate shoes. The whole reason we're doing this is because there is a lot of talk about what shoe is the best. Is this Astral uh, Brewer or is the Rassler or is the TX3? I don't know. Who knows? Does anybody know? No. We're gonna find out though. So, I built this ridiculous contraption. Stupid saw. Our methodology is pretty simple. It's just a big lever arm and there's a protractor on there. All it does is measure how many degrees it takes before the shoe slips down on the sample piece. So for the sample piece, I went out, I grabbed a piece of slate from the river and we're just testing out slate right now. We're subsequent videos, if you guys like this, we can try it with some uh, sandstone. We can try it with some granite. Some granite. Mm -hmm. You know, just a lot of other uh, common river rocks that you're going to run into out there. So, after building this, we are going to take these shoes. We're going to squirt them with five shots of water, and then we're going to test them wet and we're going to test them dry. All right, let's get into it. We began our tests with a dry sample piece and a dry shoe. Now the shoe is actually lifted up above the marks on the protractor, so the numbers we show here are just going to be a measure of the traction based on the number on the protractor. So in this case, the TX3 had a 32. Now we have the Chaco Z Cloud coming in at 27. What's really interesting about this test is how quickly shoes slip on the sample piece. Here the PFD sandal came in at a 43, the Bruis a 39, the 510 Trail Cross slipped at 31. The Rassler slipped at 34. The Skate Shoe at 31. And the TX Canyon came in at 34 on our scale. For the next part of our test, we wanted to see what the difference in traction loss was going to be when the sample piece was wet and the shoe was wet. So we started by saturating our sample piece. Next, we applied five sprays from the spray bottle to the sole of the shoe. After that, we repeated the experiment with the TX3 coming in at 31. The Chaco Z Cloud was a little surprising with the speed that it slipped, but it clocked in at 26. The PFD sandal was extremely surprising, also coming in at 26 like the Chaco sandal. The Brewis proved super slippery when it finally broke traction in the dry test. In the wet test, it didn't slip as quickly, but still clocked in at 31. When we looked at the stealth rubber of the 510 Trail Cross, it had similar performance drop. It wasn't huge, but it did slip at 30. During the Rassler 2.0, it slipped at 32. However, it didn't fly off the sample piece like it did in the dry test. The Van Skate shoe was somewhat surprising for us because it had a pretty decent traction even when wet. The last one was the TX Canyon, which I was super excited about because La Sportiva said that this shoe increased traction when wet. So we put it to the test and the shoe came out at 36. In fact, increasing traction. In a second, what is the most traction you can get in a shoe? But let's take a look at some analysis real quick. And we want to look at the highest traction shoe, which was surprisingly the Astral PFD sandal uh, when it was dry. So mm -hmm. the dry traction on this was Incredible. Now, um, the traction loss, though. Terrible. That, that was pretty awesome. bad. It was uh, almost a 40% traction loss. Wow. So, I mean, we were talking about that, and Kristen's like, oh, what if this is, like, the worst one? That would be, that'd be weird. And then it, it was. Did so, it? Uh, <laughs> wet traction, that's, that's actually one of the worst wet traction shoes that we had. In fact, the two sandals were the wet traction worst shoes, um, mm -hmm. the Chaco and the Astral shoe. So uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, I also thought that the 
Brewis would have a higher traction when it was wet, but mm -hmm. it had a 20% traction loss. Yeah, which so, is very interesting. So you were saying some of the, the Brewis has a similar sole to which other one? The Rassler. So that was kind of interesting, but the Rassler, um, the Rassler ended up dry having worse traction and they ended up pretty similar when they were wet. That is interesting. So I wonder if that was an anomaly with the tests. Yeah. Um, we did only test each shoe once though. True. So I think in future iterations of our test, we're going to have to get some more data points. Mm -hmm. That's going to be good. And then you were talking about um, filling out the shoe a little bit more too. Yeah, so we just put in a little simple hand weight. And if you think about it, it's really only putting pressure kind of on two main spots in the shoe, the heel and the ball of your foot, which are great spots and have a lot of surface area. But if you think about when you actually have your foot in the shoe, your foot is filling the shoe completely and you're having full contact of the surface of your shoe with whatever surface you're walking on generally. Um, so that could also sway you know, the friction of the shoe because more surface area of the shoe has pressure on it. And so you might actually get higher numbers as far as, you know, at what angle do these shoes decide to slip. So we also only tested one piece of sample material and yes. that was slate. So if y'all like this and you want to see some more examples of this, um, you know, you could drop us a message and uh, feel free to let me know what your closest rock is and what you'd like to see me try and test it on. Um, and then we can go out and do some more tests with it, get some more sample points. And then I do have a friend with a dynamometer. So one, we could probably engineer a test where I am uh, stuck in some sort of harness and then we put a strap around the base of the shoe and then try to pull me off my feet. So I think that would be fun to, to kind of see how sticky they really are. Um, so that's another test point that, that we could uh, get on. And then um, I, I guess I think from all the analysis, what is the most fascinating is the amount of traction uh, difference between the highest shoe and every other shoe. Oh yeah. Because it was 11% was the, the smallest bit difference of traction from the best shoe to the, the second best shoe. And then everything else fell kind of in between that with the worst being almost 28% traction loss, which is pretty bad. Like, <laughs> um, that, that's pretty rough in terms of wet traction. So yeah. what is the best shoe? La Sportiva TX Canyon. Heck yeah. And that one actually increased traction just like La Sportiva said. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. Like that, that was weird that it increased traction when it was wet. It's nice that something performs as it's told, though. Yeah, yeah, and that, when I initially talked to them about it, they said, this is what it's designed for, and this is what we designed the rubber for. So uh, I was like, I was pretty impressed with that. Oh, so yeah. um, if you all have any suggestions on future tests that we could do, um, let us know down in the comments below. I hope this has been just as fascinating for you because this is one of our biggest things is everybody wants to know about shoes. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this test doesn't cover everything though because shoes are kind of a dynamic environment, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people, this only tests one thing. Like people want uh, different things from shoes. Some people will get into a trail cross and be like, this is too narrow for my foot. And some people will get into a La Sportiva and be like, this is too wide or it doesn't fit in weird ways or it's too stiff. So traction isn't the only thing with shoes. Um, I mean, there's a whole lot more. Like, what, what do you see a lot that people look for in shoes other than traction? Fit. I mean, you want to be just as comfy as you're sh in your shoes as you are in your helmet or your life jacket. Like, I know personally, I like to joke and say I have small little hobbit feet. So my feet are small and they're a little wide. Um, and you know, most shoes, especially like women's shoes are too narrow. Um, so then my feet are just uncomfortable. You know, I kind of like, don't really want to be walking around a whole lot. Um, and so personally my boat shoe is the Astral Brew S because the toe box is perfect. Um, and I have just the right amount of space to put on a thick sock and still be comfortable or wear it barefoot. Um, and then my everyday shoe is just a pair of Vans 
Um, they break in really well, and according to our tests, they aren't a terrible option if you're running low and the They're money They're actually department. better than Shaco sandals or, <laughs> or the Astral, the Astral sandal. FD sandals. So, I mean, you could throw on a Van skate shoe and actually be okay out there. Like, yeah. I mean, it's it's not the worst thing. It's not the best thing, but it's not the worst thing in the world. So, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, is one of these better? One of these better? Definitely. But, um, you know, it, it kind of answers the question, like, in a pinch, can you just throw on your street shoes? Definitely. Like, oh, yeah. um, especially if, you know, you only have one pair of shoes to go out on the river with, if, uh, you know, your budget is a concern, then maybe... Throwing on a pair of, you, you know, whatever you have, sneakers, skate shoes, things like that. They're, they're not going to be awful, but, uh, I mean, they're not designed for this environment. So that's that's another factor to consider. But they are going to be comfortable. Yeah, totally. And, and you mentioned something else, too, that was kind of interesting, is that um, these may not fit when you have thick socks on, dry suit socks. Um, so a lot of people worry about, you know, what size they should have and, and you know, deciding sizing for the winter and summer. And we talked about this in another video, I think. We did, yeah. Um, about how to make that work. And there's some super secret things that you can do that, um, you know, some people would want you to just buy more stuff or you could just kind of... Pull the insole out, lace it to, a little differently. And then you're good to go for winter. So yeah. that is an option too. Um, all right, so if you guys have questions about this, please drop those below. We would love to hear about it. This is a pretty good uh, discussion topic, I think, and one that's very, um, uh, there's a lot of opinions about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, if you have questions, you can always let us know. You can also reach out to Kristen at the River Store. She has all kinds of cool stuff in here. And if you need to get anything, they also have a web store. So yes, we do. Uh, you can view all of that at theriverstore.com. Boom, we'll drop a link below. And hopefully this helps you make a decision about uh, what kind of shoe you want to get. And again, we'll do some more deeper 